Most everyone knows who I'm talking about. The head of a runaway success crypto exchange, Binance, the man whose real name is Chang Pan Zhao. Welcome to Coindesk TV. I hope I didn't butcher that too bad. Thank you, Belly. Thank you for having me. And that's that is that is yeah, that, that is perfectly fine. Okay, wonderful. I get it because my last name also gets butchered quite a bit. Um, so actually, I usually go by BR on Slack channels and other social media, um, but literally no one else would know that besides inside of Coindesk. So um, I'll be hosting the session with you. Thanks so much. Um, we're going to start with a little fireside chat with you because I know that everybody really wants to get to know CZ. Um, so first of all, where are you in the world right now? I'm in Singapore. Okay, in Singapore. Has, how has sort of the coronavirus pandemic and the subsequent lockdowns changed your life? Because I know usually you're, you're globetrotting and flying all around the world. Yeah, so to be honest, from a work perspective, it didn't change all that much. Um, I, it, I used to travel quite a bit more, uh, just at, like uh, attending conferences, uh, business meetings, etc. So now like, I'm just uh, working from home. And um, but from the Binance from the Binance perspective, we have been working from home the whole like forever, right? So um, that didn't really change much. And um, uh, like based on what I see, the output from the team, uh, the pace have not the pace have not slowed at all. So we've been uh, we, so we got really lucky that we were trained to do work from home earlier um, on our own pace. And then uh, so this sudden shift actually didn't really cause us that much uh, impact from a productivity point of view. Uh, from a business point of view, I think most cryptocurrency exchanges are doing well now. Um, it's not just Binance. I think Binance is doing, uh, from uh, from our own data, is doing excep exceptionally well, um, and uh, we're gaining market share in, in a lot of in a, in a lot of cases, which is good. Um, yeah. So we're not just getting users from the macro uh, uh, increase of uh, virtual currency interest. So overall, things are going uh, things are going pretty well. Have you seen a lot of new users recently, like since the sort of pandemic and lockdown started? Um, at, just because at Coindesk, we're hearing a lot of people asking, you know, why should I buy Bitcoin or should I buy Bitcoin? Um, so there does seem to be a lot of newbies in the space. Are you seeing that at Binance? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, so the new user registrations are picking uh, are picking up um, very aggressively. Um, it's like getting close to the uh, sort of uh, January 2018 level. Uh, it's not quite there yet. At January 2018, we were seeing like 300,000 users per like in one hour because we were limiting the uh, <laughs> registration windows. Um, it's not at that quite at that level yet, but it's definitely picking up very aggressively. Um, there's some other interesting indications. Our customer support queue is um, uh, increasing now too because we are kind of shorthanded on customer support. Um, there's a lot of old users resetting their passwords. Uh, because basically they don't use the account for a while, they forget their passwords, and now they're coming back. Uh, we also have very, a lot of new users like uh, depositing into wrong addresses, etc. So uh, all of those indications are uh, very clear. Um, the activity level is definitely much higher than um, I would say even three or four months ago. So it's, yeah. it's definitely picked up quite like a, a few times more activity now. Okay. Yeah. So I want to get to some personal questions because again. And I know people, you know, you have sort of a mysterious atmosphere around you. And I think people really want to get to know CZ. So my first question, because you've been traveling around a lot, usually, where's the first place you're going to go when the restrictions lift? Um, well, I think we probably, uh, so most likely, uh, I mean, like, look, virtual conferences are great. Like you can attend like a few of them at a day, in a day and still do a lot of work. Uh, <laughs> but I think it's, there's still something missing that the physical interactions uh, that, that gives you that virtual conferences don't. So I think the first thing we probably want to do is probably organize a big conference after the, uh, <laughs> the quarantine is over. So most likely, um, whichever, I think basically most likely in Asia, we were planning a big con physical conference in uh, Vietnam in May. So that obviously got put on hold. Um, so probably we'll resume with that uh, as soon as the quarantine is over. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, everybody look forward to a Binance conference in Vietnam. That's awesome. Great. Um, okay. And then what is your, how, how is your daily routine shifted since the pandemic? So I know you said you usually work from home or work remotely, but is there any sort of tools that you use to help you better sort of organize now that like everything's online? 
Um, I think we 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 don't really have any special tools we use. We use all the same same tools. We use like Zoom, um, Google Meet. Um, uh, we use Telegram, WhatsApp. Um, we use every, we. So I think the thing is probably just we use every tool out there. Um, so we also have du uh, duplicating tools. Uh, we have more than we have a few different chat programs we use for our team uh, and different teams, uh, different like small teams prefer different uh, things, and that's okay. So uh, it's just really tricky checking the messages all over the place. <laughs> so you have a lot of badges, you have a lot of uh, 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 you have a, a lot of notifications. The way the way I do it is basically I sub, I separate the tools I use internally with an inter internal team uh, versus externally. So then uh, I can prioritize uh, the two differently. And, okay. Um, yeah. So when I wake up, I usually check the internal chats first, and then um, uh, after I go through all the issues, deal deal with all of that, then I check the ex external ones. Um, I actually don't do. I actually don't interface that much externally, other than on social media. So I manage my own Twitter. Um, so I, um, I I I spend a lot of time there. Um, it's a little bit addictive, to be honest. I I, I really enjoy chatting with with our users, etc. Yeah. Yeah. Um, fair enough. Fair yeah, enough. and Twitter then just get, is very addicting. <laughs> yeah, and then just handling problems, um, uh, or just getting the feel of the community sentiment, etc. What's important, what's not important. Um, I don't do a lot of other external uh, interfaces like uh, coin listings, uh, project investments, all of those things. Um, we have teams to handle it. So uh, my routine is pretty simple. My routine is like just like uh, just like anything else. Um, I wake up in the morning. I check in with my team. Um, and then uh, from there, the days the day usually goes very different depending on depending on the, on the situation. Some days, the trading will be very heavy. Um, the engineers will, will will be busier. Some days there will be some I don't know random PR issue. There'll be some fake news to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Um, have so because of this, have you had more time for hobbies? And you know, do you have hobbies besides just running this business? Um, I don't have. I, uh, I used to have a lot of different hobbies. I'm um, used to be a fairly active uh, outdoor sportsy person. Um, not super, not super athletic, but athletic enough to be like sort of just doing uh, trying a lot of different uh, sports. Um, but I recently did a, a surgery on my back about uh, three months ago, um, uh, and uh, I'm still I'm still like kind of taking very slow. So they don't, they, the uh, and um, uh, Singapore has a very strong quarantine right now, so we can't even leave the house. Well, we could, but we're not supposed to. Um, so, um, I uh, so I bought a um, rolling water rolling machine online. So that's kind of my um, physical therapy exercise to to gain strength on my back. Um, so that's all I do. Um, so n not much else. Um, oh yeah, I do, those I, the the things with the wheel in the middle and the handles on the side. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, those are hard. <laughs> It's actually, it's actually, it's actually really good for your back. So that worked, that works out, that works really well for me. Um, so my physical therapist recommended it, and I can't really leave home to to attend physical therapy sessions anyway. So I'm just doing that. It's actually quite, quite, quite good. And uh, are there any authors, favorite authors, that you're like catching up on all their new work um, that you could tell people about? Um, yeah, I, I do. I do um, read or listen to books a lot. Um, I use Audible very extensively. Um, and uh, um, so uh, there are quite a number of interesting uh, authors. Um, I have a, I actually have a book recommendation list, but uh, I think Economics in One Lesson by Henry, uh, what's his last name? I actually don't have it. I actually forgot, um, I forgot his last name on top of my head. Um, but I, uh, um, I, I, uh, I'll, share, I'll share the book list uh, once more. Uh, I think also um, um, uh, the Law, uh, which is written in 1850 um, uh, by um, uh, Frederick Bastiat, uh, a French author. So that's like written a book written 150 years ago, 170 years ago now. Um, that's also a really, really good book. It talks about like what laws should be, what what government should intervene with and should not intervene with. Um, and it's a very classic time uh, 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 time uh, proven book. So basically, it's not time sensitive. It's not. It's it's very it's very fundamental to principles. So uh, there's a lot of those good books. Um, I think um, yeah, um, I read about one to two books a week. Um, so just so that kind of sucks up my free time if, if there is any. 
and also these days I can listen to them. It's a lot easier. So I can be on the rolling machine and still listen to books. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. I haven't gotten into the, the audio books yet, but one to two a week is really quite good. I was reading much more before quarantine, to be fair. I think commuting was my big place to, like commuting in public transportation was my big place to read. So now my reading's just kind of gone downhill. Um, right. 